What is up, everybody? How are we doing, folks? So how are we doing, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Hopefully you all are doing well. So the first break, just so you guys know, will be the ultimate 14511. So, ultimate will be the first one. Then we got, I think, two or three or four other breaks that are uh, either filled or very close to filled. Yeah, ultimate, series one, the double up, the mixer, the 10 boxer. Um, then we can get everything else moving. But how is everyone doing today? is everyone doing <laughs> you know what's even funnier bills I called the exact score I said I said three one or four two and I also did say there will be an empty net goal so I'm not gonna lie I was pretty although very upset that they lost I called it to a T like to a T that they were gonna lose and the exact way I thought they were going to lose, which is really sad. It pains me. It pains me a lot, but it is what it is. It is super unfortunate, isn't it? But the good news is the, uh, the Habs and the Jets series will be a great series, I think. And obviously, uh, still a lot of great hockey to be played. So, not the end of the world overall. But yeah. So in about uh, five minutes, folks, we are going to do the ultimate first. Then we will move into the double up. Then the series one, series two.
So how is everyone else doing though? I guess the uh, the draft is on right now, eh? Seattle, Anaheim, Buffalo are the three that are left. So we will see who is picking number three. Will it be Seattle? Or will one of those two drop? Oh my gosh. Anaheim drops. So Seattle or Buffalo will be the number one pick. My God, if it's Seattle, you know how many people are going to say this is absolutely rigged? Nope. So Buffalo number one, Seattle number two. Wow, that's pretty cool. Most likely Owen Powers. They are gonna be a defensive nightmare in a few years with Darlene and uh, Powers. So Buffalo wins number one pick two years out of the last four. I wonder if they're going to do anything with it at all. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to start the first break, folks. 14,511. I wish you guys all the best of luck. Here we go, starting off CNC break, 14,511, ultimate. what we get here folks triple jersey number three of eight of Gilbert Lafleur and Esposito what's up Jeff how you doing sir Gilbert Lafleur Esposito number seven of twelve Bobby Clark so seven spot Seven of twelve, Bobby Clark. And we've got a one of one auto, Steve Larmer. Steve Larmer, one of one for obviously the one spot. Number 17 of 25, dual autograph, Hodge and Busick, Leaf Depression. Yep. 17 of 25. So, seven spot. We've got an autograph, number 10 of 15, Paul Coffee. Number 10 of 15. 
coffee. And we've got numbered one of four dual patch of Bossy and Gretzky. One of four Bossy Gretzky. Damn. Wow, that was pretty filthy. That is pretty filthy. Yeah, Jeff, that was, uh, you know what, they, I will say at least, they obviously did not win, which you're supposed to win that game in my opinion, but they played decently well. Again, still sucks that they lost, I will give it that 100%, but they, it's not like they just absolutely crapped the bed and didn't come out at least trying. They played a pretty good aggressive game in my opinion. They just could not finish. And obviously, kudos to Price. That guy is an absolute freaking monster, man. He played a hell of a series. Alright, so I'm going to get the double up teams all ready for you guys. 14,500. Here we go. 14,500, the double up. One, two, three. Copy, paste. One, two, three. Copy, paste. Turnover's got the Leafs, that makes sense. Game Warren's got Vancouver. IBJ's got LA. DD's got Columbus. Julie's got Florida. And Santos, San Jose, turnover Rangers. Brandon, Ed Money, Julie's Boston, turnover Philly. Org's got St. Louis, Timothy's got Dallas, and Santos, New Jersey, Cody, Ottawa. Game Warren, Calgary, Cody, Anaheim, B Powers got Nashville, Org got Buffalo. Turnover's got Washington, B Powers, Arizona, Brandon, Detroit, IBJ's got Winnipeg, Stewie's got Chicago, Bullseye, Carolina, Timothy, Pittsburgh, Stewie, Montreal, Bullseye, Colorado, D's got Tampa. Minnesota and Islanders go to turn over. <laughs> go Habs go. That was a good series for you guys. Congrats, Mr. Golden. As I said, I'm not, uh, I'm not in the least surprised. But uh, kudos to you guys. I wish you guys the best of luck now. As I said, hopefully at least you know one Leaf fan who's not uh, super bitter. I feel like we have quite a few of us who are not super bitter. So, that was entertaining. That was an entertaining series. You know, you know what the one thing I thought about, in my opinion, and I don't know why I started thinking about it, like it actually kind of caught, like not calmed me down, it's not like I was freaking out, I was upset they lost, but I really started thinking about this big goal and I was like, you know what, for everyone panicking saying blow up the team, I started honestly thinking about Colorado, and realistically, their big core, obviously Makar just stud, I'm not, not including him. But Landis Gog was 11-12, McKinnon's 13-14, Rontanen's 15-16. Uh, if you actually think about this, they were not a cup contending team. Maybe you could argue last year, maybe. But this year they're a bona fide, they probably should win. 
and it still took them three to four years longer with that core than the Leafs are at now. So I don't really know why people are panicking yet. I do agree if in the next two, three years nothing happens, then I feel like that's a failure for sure. So I, I just I think there's a few holes they gotta patch up. I, I will say again, trying to be as absolutely unbiased as possible. I think there is absolutely a few changes that should be made that I think I think would have been frowned upon if they did it. And the one change I think was the most obvious is put Nick Robertson in instead of Joe Thornton. But I will say out of respect for Joe Thornton, I feel like that'd be a D-bag move to literally bench him in maybe his last game or last games. Personally, I think that would be a very poor <laughs> decision. Smart hockey move, I agree. But poor decision to do, and I think it'd be not a polite thing to do. So that would be the one thing I would have done differently. The other thing I would have absolutely split up Matthews and Marner after game about four or five. To see if they could help two lines instead of having one that you're just trying to rely on. That clearly was not working as good as it should have. You know what, Golden? I like Joe Thornton a lot. But he absolutely was too slow out there. And I do think a bit of youth in there would have helped out. In all honesty, and again, just my opinion of what I saw, and I will admit I didn't see every single game. Simmons, Thornton, and uh, Felino, it just didn't turn out well for us. In my opinion, I think we could have utilize those spots significantly better like I think Robertson in there I don't think Nash would have been much better honestly um on the outside the only thing though Golden you are correct I don't know in the change room if it was significantly better the only outcome I could say is was it really any better if they still couldn't get through that with those people Felino was absolutely injured. I do not disagree with you, Golden. I, I do not hold that against them. I'm just saying there are very uneventful players for where they're supposed to be quite eventful. Like Simmons, I honestly expected a cheap version of Tom Wilson. Right? And I feel like he was pretty much just non-existent in that series. Like, was he ever a threat offensively? Did he really do anything to stir up the uh, the team? Not really. Like. But again, I do not doubt that the team loves Joe Thornton and Simmons. Change room wise, I think leadership wise. But at the end of the day, it still didn't get it done. You know, I if you bring those guys in and you're up 3-1, it should be a very... You know, that's when they should be taking the bull by the horns and finishing off the series. You know, calming them down where they're maybe going to be worrying. Tavares messed up a lot, but again, there's no excuses. I, I absolutely think the Leafs did lose. They should have lost. They won easily games 2, 3, 4. Not easily. They lost games 5, 6, 7. And two of them were very close. Just literally one shot away on both teams. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who you're missing or who you got. You lost them. And I know people point out the Tavares thing and the only counter which is funny because I'm a Leafs fan the only counter I would have had where were you guys on 2, 3, and 4 those games when we had no Tavares but we won those games right so I, I don't think that was the only reason or a big cause of the reason we clearly won 3 of the first 4 games without Tavares I don't think that was a ma I think they just mentally collapsed honestly and I think they have played phenomenally well. Here we go. 14,500. The mix or double break. 
I, you know what? I'm surprised they did not play Robertson. I, I am absolutely thoroughly surprised. So, but as I said, what's done is done is done. <laughs> you cannot change it now. The Leafs are the Leafs, right? That's they make it very entertaining, no matter how you put it. We got a Couturier for the Flyers. Profiles of McDavid. And a rookie of Valamaki for the Calgary Flames. Valamaki. Rookie of Dermot for the Leafs. Messier Blue for the Rangers. And a rookie jersey of Sikura for the Hawks. Sikura, Sikura. At the end of the day, Price played mind-blowingly good. We can't be upset at Campbell. Our defense wasn't horrible. We had a few cough-ups. Our offense was not as good as it should have been, but it wasn't bad. Batherson for the Ottawa Senators. The other thing I think a lot of people forget, we suck going down the stretch too. Marshawn, blue for the Bruins. Rookie of Greenway for the Wild. Like I think a lot of people forgot that Toronto in the last like 25 games was like a 50-50 team. Kopitar, red, or sorry, blue for the Kings. Rookie of Godet for the Canucks. Oh, man, this pack didn't open up at all. Oh, the worst. The absolute worst. We've got a Wilson for the Caps Blue and a Stone Profiles for the Sens. Yeah. Quick for the LA Kings. Rookie Authentics of Sveshnikov for the Kings. Actually, to be fair though, Golden, I do not look as actually as the opposite, to be honest. Middlestad, Rookie Authentics for the Sabres. I think our offensive depth is what kept us in that series. I think the star powers, for the most part, were failed us. Like, Kerfoot, Spezza... Um, and the few of the other guys, I think, is what kind of kept us <laughs> going. Thank God we had those guys, or it would have been brutal. Spezzo, in my opinion, was probably... Him and Nylander were the two players... And Campbell, sorry. Him, Nylander, and Campbell were probably the three best players of the series for Toronto. Which is... Literally not how it should be, and I agree with that, Beagle, and that it's not that is definitely not what people would hope it would be. Especially with the power that we have, it definitely should not be those those three running the ship. Portrait of Larkin for the Red Wings. Cool man young guns for the Boston Bruins. Base. Base. Bodker for the Ottawa Senators canvas. But the only good news is at least found a good way be golden to make a very kind of uninteresting series surprisingly turn into a very fun interesting series. Handola Young Guns for the Jets. The Leafs have that crazy ability to somehow... Just turn something into, or turn nothing into something. Rene Portrait for the Preds. And base. We've got a Macar for the Avalanche Glossy. Hughes Bronze for the Canucks. Texier for the Jackets. So, what's your guys' predictions for tonight? The Jets game. What do you guys have as a Jets game? I have it 3 nothing Jets or 3-1 Jets tonight. We've got a red of Bossy for the Islanders. Gillies uh, blue for the Calgary Flames. McAvoy exceptional talent for the Boston Bruins. Gerard Red for the Avalanche. 
Nylander Blue for the Sabres. Impact players of Crosby for the Penguins. He's a waiver goal. We've got a Dubnik for the Minnesota Wild. Noteworthy newcomers of Heedle for the Rangers. And number to 24, Brat for the Devils. Brat for the Devils. We've got a red of Tarasenko for the Blues. Impact player Zetterberg for the Wings. And a Ben for the Dallas Stars. I would be stunned if Campbell is not our goalie for next year. Cast for greatness for Dallas Stars. And honestly, it actually is probably the best scenario for our goalie because it saves us a lot of money. Patrick Kane, red for the Hawks. Eichel, blue for the Buffalo Sabres. Ross Levick for the Jets newcomers. Bjork, red for the Boston Bruins. Backstrom, blue for the Caps. Exceptional town of Lungfist for the Rangers. We've got a Dunn Red Rookie for the Blues. Bork for the Boston Bruins. Career spanning of Ray Bork. Kokanen Red for the Canes. Matthews Blue for the Leafs. Impact players of Bobby Orr for the Boston Bruins. And the Toronto's got a lot of decisions to make, but I, I think they're going to be more than fine, honestly. They just got to get over that hump, honestly, in their heads. They just... Something is wrong with them mentally in their head. We've got an Orum of Brady Kachuk. Uh, Habs? What do you mean, sorry? Brady Kachuk. We've got a 2.99 Tyler Benson. I would be very thoroughly disappointed if Hyman doesn't come back. I understand the restrictions, but I would be that would that would be sucky. We've got a 3.99 for the Penguins, Sidney Crosby. Four ninety nine Warinsky for the Blue Jackets. Patchy, patchy, patchy. Woo -hoo -hoo! Very nice. One of one. Dual black patch auto for the Minnesota Wild. Eric Stahl. One of one. Eric Stahl. Wow. That's pretty sweet. We've got a 2.99 Ronton in for the Avalanche. The only thing that doesn't make much sense to me, if he's worth six, why is everyone barking about the Nylander contract? 2.99 Anders Lee for the Islanders. Hyman's a great player, but if he's six, why is Nylander not? Uh, McDavid, 4.99 for the Oilers. Beautiful card for Minnesota. Holy moly. And I, I said, I love Zach Hyman. I really do. I just don't understand why people still harp on the Nylander deal. Uh, Habs depend when the break was. When was the chance to break? Because I bet you those base cards were just to pad up the, uh, pad up your shipment and I'm guessing your chance was probably a day that wasn't a uh, shipping day. Top 50 of Bastion for the Devils. Brandstrom red rookie jersey for the Sens. And a L'Esperance for the Dallas Stars. It's like empty calories. We've got a short print. Sandine for the Leafs. L'Esperance white die cut for the Dallas Stars. Top 50 of Abramov for the Sens. Sagan, white die cut for the Dallas Stars. Faraby, rookie for the Flyers.
We've got a winter storm warning of Anders Lee for the Islanders, Grundstrom for the LA Kings, and a Myers top 50 autograph rookie for the Flyers. Myers for the Flyers. Uh, 23rd, what date are we on now? Kako for the Rangers. Top 50 of Suzuki for the Habs. Tavares red die cut for the Leafs. Balsers for the Sens. Quinn Hughes for the Canucks. Breeze Bois for the Vancouver Canucks. Vasilevsky iced out for the Tampa Lightning. We got a Stamkos white die cut for Tampa. Schultz for the Vegas Golden Knights. Top 50 of Hayton for the Coyotes. Jack Eichel, number to 99, Quartz for the Buffalo Sabres. And a rookie of McEwen for Vancouver. We've got a Fabro for the Preds. We've got a Kirby Doc, short print pink for the Hawks. White die cut of Dallas Stars Pavelski. And let's see what the clear cut has in store for us. Where's my knife gone? There it is. For the Hawks, Adam Boakfest. Here we go. Boakfest for the Hawks. Let me take a picture for the gram. Of that 101, that's pretty damn cool. Obviously quite rare. Where do I always put the... They always move it on me. I never know where it goes. Do it on this. Lighting's horrible on this. The lighting's horrible. That's hilarious. The first one, wow. That honestly is pretty crazy. Hey, you guys know first hand I've been on the uh on the boat of I absolutely hate the way the NHL is trending and these players are I understand it guys and I, I do think guys like these guys have worked their like young lives to be as good as they have been so they are allowed to command what they want but just don't be surprised if you don't win that's literally what it is So, okay, so Habs, I just looked at it. The break went Thursday, which is a new shipping uh, week. So that's why you haven't got that one yet. That would be included on uh, this upcoming shipping, which is today is the last day. So that would be on this week. Our shipping always goes, for you guys know, Thursday to Wednesday. That is why every single week I tell you guys on Wednesdays, Today is the best day, in my opinion, 
to fill as many group breaks as possible because they all leave very quickly. Whereas if you let a break go till tomorrow, you're basically waiting an additional week. Not the end of the world, obviously, but still, sooner is always better, right? So yeah, that one uh, would still be here, and tomorrow will be the day we are sorting and organizing that, just so you are 100% clear. So never ever worry on that kind of stuff. The base cards, if anyone ever wants to know, we normally use those to pad up the uh, shipping just to make sure there's no movement or as little movement as possible. And I heard that uh, the winner of the Jets Hab series is playing, unfortunately, the Vegas or Colorado winner. Woo! Oh, perfect. That is great to hear. Well, you got to remember, 67 is working for Boston's number uh, top guys right now. I, I think people always look at, like, older contracts as... Like, again, it's great, but I'm saying when these guys get new contracts, I do not think they're going to just be like, I want six mil. All right, guys, 503, I'm going to do the randoms. 14,503, one, two, three. Copy, paste. One, two, three. Copy, paste. Perps got Islanders, Orgs got Philly, Patrick, Montreal, Rocco, Toronto, Armin's got Rangers. LTLA, Scott, Detroit, Cody, Florida, PV, Arizona, JP, Winnipeg, Ryan, Columbus, Link, Carolina, Nick, San Jose, Cody, Anaheim, Mario, Washington, JS, Nashville, Brandon, Tampa, Killer, Calgary, PT's got Vancouver, Sniper, Boston, CK, Buffalo, Staff, he had money, DJ's got Ottawa, Rackman, Dallas, DD's got Pittsburgh, Rackman, Minnesota, Link, Colorado, St. Louis, PT, New Jersey, Patrick, Chicago, and Eric's got Vegas. So here's a, an interesting one for you guys. Just a fun conversation. If Montreal, for sake of conversation, handles Winnipeg. Like, handles Winnipeg. Like, five games, four games. Does that make Leaf fans feel any better or worse? Yeah, so right now, for example, Boston has Krejci up next year. Bergeron in two years. And Pasternak in three more years. So indifferent. Okay, fair enough. I, I just don't... I was trying to leave it out because like, I'm like, if the Habs win this series, does that burn me more as a Leaf fan or less that we could have done that? Or does it make me feel better that, okay, we're not as bad as I think we were? Like, my thinking is, again, random hypothetical. If the Habs somehow beat the Jets and then they beat the Avalanche or the Golden Knights and they go to the Cup, like, are the Leafs as bad as we thought then? Does that kind of help out it, or is it still sucky? Not that I think it's going to happen.
I just, uh, random blabbling, babbling for me. Uh, you know what's, I'm not going to lie, I'm very surprised, can any Boston fan let me know, why is Krejci the highest paid player on Boston? That is... Ridiculous. So any trades, folks? Um, you know what, Shane? I have no idea about card values. I, 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 again, I've been very, very busy over the last little while. I haven't even seen if has McDavid taken a dip at all. Well, it looks like Big Golden Year Half are doing quite well for five minutes into a game, eh? Jeez. Let's stay together for the glory. I, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised. They obviously have uh, a winning formula. I'm good on them, right? Here we go. 14,503. We've got the Series 1 and Series 2. Break. Let me make sure it moves that one over. Boom. I'm just saying the Habs scored, uh, you know, it took them like almost a whole game to score two goals on Toronto. And then, you know, they've done that in only five minutes for the Jets. <laughs> uh, different series, different players, different things. We've got a French variant of Bobrovsky for the Panthers. Worldwide of Crosby for the Penguins. Portraits for the Wild of Zuccarello. Well, I'm curious what uh, Bergeron and Pasternak are going to command on the next deals. Game worn jersey, Abdul Cater. Playoff hockey, I agree. You never know what happens. I love it. We got a predominant of Huberto for the Panthers. Debut of Primo for the Habs. Canvas of Carlson for the Sharks. Krejci's a beast. He honestly is. Landstrom for the Red Wings, Young Guns. We've got a rookie retrospective jersey of Mers Lickens. Retrospective jersey of Mers Lickens. You think his contract will go down next? Interesting. Reed Duke Young Guns for the Golden Knights. Pasta, yeah, he, he should be a 10 plus in my opinion. Portrait of Kemper for the Coyotes. Portrait for the Flyers of Konechny.
Vanisek Young Guns for the Caps. Yandel for the Panthers. When's uh, when's McKinnon's contract up? Or is he up soon? Rookie Retrospective of Nietzsche for the Canes. Worldwide of Bishop for the Dallas Stars. Canvas of Kuznetsov for the Caps. Robertson Young Guns for the Maple Leafs. Predominant of Yossi for the Preds. Dazzlers of Barzel for the Islanders. Di Pietro Young Guns for the Vancouver Canucks. 22-23. Okay. Portrait of Bellows for the Islanders. Soderstrom Young Guns for the Coyotes. Anna Shesterkin for the Rangers canvas. So who's the next biggest contract coming up in general? That would just be an interesting one to see. Who's the next biggest one? Pietro Young Guns for Vancouver. McKinnon's the next biggest one, eh? Hmm. Portrait of Robertson for Dallas Stars. Tyson Berry. Harley Young Guns for Dallas. Canvas of Kyle Connor for the Jets. Worldwide of Panarin for the Rangers. Dazzlers for the Habs, Carey Price. French variant, Lynn Home for the Ducks. McKinnon right now is arguably the best player. Arguably. Radula for the Dallas Stars. I I know people are basing it right now on the playoffs. It's still one of those would you want would you want McDavid over McKinnon? And I feel like it'd be very, very, uh very tough. Predominant of Gibson. It'd be very tough not to take McD McDavid. Predominant of Stahl for the Wild. But I do agree, Bob. I think McKinnon's got to be at, like, top one, two, three type thing. Kucherov, Tampa Bay. Portraits for the Devils, Jack Hughes. Gusev for the Devils, debut. Rookie retrospective of Kirby Doc for the Hawks. What contract does Ovi get? Yeah, I don't know. For the Capitals, Alexiev Canvas. Canvas. Make sure, oh god, that would be a big trade, wouldn't it? Broberg, Young Guns for the Oilers. The thing is, I feel like McKinnon thrives because of the team he has as well, which is not saying he's not a good player. Yossi for the Preds. Like, again, playing with Ronton and Landis got Makar on power play. You got some beasts. 
for the Young Guns for the Jets. Like McKinnon absolutely has got much more of a uh, supporting cast than McDavid does. Kucherov die cut. Worldwide. Yeah, McDavid on the Avalanche would just be, I think, a different level. Yo, Levy, Young Guns for the Canucks. Portraits for the Rangers, the Benishad. Ustamenko, Young Guns for the Flyers. Canvas, Huberto for the Panthers. We've got a worldwide of McDavid for the Oilers. McDavid on the Avalanche. Woo! That would be fun. Oh, we make 10 mil. I don't know, like. Is it rude to under... Like, not underpay him. Is it rude to give him a lesser contract at this point? DeRozier, Young Guns for the uh, for the Panthers. Portraits for the Anaheim Ducks of Hawk and Pa. I don't know. Marky Rookie for the Golden Knights of Reed Duke. Barabanov, Young Guns for the Leafs. Canvas for the Blue Jackets of Atkinson. Portrait of Bowers for the Avalanche. Marky Rookie of Ottinger for the Dallas Stars. Marky Rookie of Ant Whistle for the Hawks. I, I think he signed a two, three year deal. Probably around the eight to 10. Joseph Wall, Marky Rookies for the Leafs. Dazzlers Pink, Mantha for the Red Wings. McAvoy for the Boston Bruins, Canvas. Marky Rookie Blue, Vanasek. Hawk and Pa, Young Guns for the Ducks. Portraits of Robertson for the Leafs. We've got a clear cut of Kako for the Rangers. Kako for the Rangers. Clear. Cut. Award winners for the Wild of Dumba. Sorokin Young Guns. That's a good one to get graded right now. Josh Norris for the Auto Senators. P-O-E of Bowers. P-O-E. Canvas. I don't, again, I don't watch the games. Is McKinnon very, is he good defensively? Chatfield, Young Guns for Vancouver. Anyone who actually watches uh, Colorado a decent amount, is he actually a good defensive player or just so-so? Portrait of Larmy for the Penguins. Mikola Young Guns for the Blues. Canvas of Fiala for the Wild. Marky Rookie of Connor Ingram for the Preds. Award winners, Makar for the Avs. All right, last box.
Marky Rookie Red of Broberg for the Oilers. Marky Rookie Blue of Regula for the Hawks. Fluorescence Peyton Kreps for the Vegas Golden Knights. Fluorescence Peyton Kreps. Portrait Rookies of McMichael for the Caps. Award winners of Dre Seidel for the Oilers. Marky Rookie of Zagadulin for the Calgary Flames. Fabry for the Red Wings Canvas. Riley Dazzlers for the Leafs. We got a foot young guns for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Portrait of Bowen Byram. French variant, LA Kings, Jonathan Quick. Ty Smith, Young Guns for the Devils. Marky Rookie of Prisky. Portrait Rookies of Joseph. We've got a canvas of Marner for the Leafs. Lankanen Young Guns for the Hawks. Canvas of Barzel for the Islanders. Prisky Young Guns for the Florida Panthers. Marky Rookie for the Coyotes of Burke. Reed Duke Marky Rookie for the Vegas Golden Knights. Marky Rookie of Robertson for the Ky uh, Maple Leafs, sorry. Marky Rookie Retro Ottinger for Dallas. David Kasha, Young Guns for the Flyers. And Whistle, Young Guns for the Hawks. Canvas of Barkov for the Panthers. And Portrait Rookies of Vanasek for the Caps. Here she goes. Get up, get focus.
me get some of this stuff organized. What's up, Art Belligan? How you doing, sir? How are you guys doing? chilling interesting but yeah that's cool good for you so I'm just updating some payments give me a few seconds folks And again, the artifacts break is getting close. Four days, I know. I love it, finally. Finally, I've made it four days. It's beautiful. All right, give me a few seconds, folks. I gotta go grab this break. I don't know if we have it here. So give me a few seconds. All right, I'll be right back, folks. Sorry about that. All right, what do we got? So we got diamond. She brought like half the break here, which is funny. Ultimate, I think, is next. Chronology, artifacts, clear cut. Chronology, artifacts, retail. Retail, plaster, all right,
All right, so. He absolutely is the biggest star yet, 100%. His future arch auto, yeah, definitely should, I would think, get some... Again, I, I really think it depends on how far he goes, which should be pretty far. But absolutely, yeah, I think uh, he's going to hit some good numbers. I think they're... How, what, what's a raw right now? Are they not already around the 2,000 raw? All right, good luck. Oh, I want to merge this one, sorry. 508, I got to change the title. Here we go. Here we go. 14,508. We've got the mix. Wow. We've got a 9-5 of Miller for the Boston Bruins. 9-5 Miller. We've got a 9-5 Young Guns for the Avalanche. Tyson Berry. Tyson Berry. And a graded nine young guns for the Capitals of Verena. Verena young guns for the Caps. That was a good pack. Berry, Verena. That's crazy, Rich. That is crazy. Dazzlers of Ottinger for the Dallas Stars. Canvas of Keller for the Coyotes. Marky Rookie of Karushev for the Hawks. Pogonski Young Guns for the Blues. <laughs> just on the card. Base. Base. Skinner Young Guns for the Oilers. And base.
We've got a Shining Stars of Patch already for the Habs. Base. Canvas of Yarn Croak for the Preds. Sabres get to rebuild again. Backstrom, Shining Stars, Rainbow for the Caps. Gillies, Young Guns for the Calgary Flames. Portraits for the Boston Bruins of Krejci. Canvas for the Islanders of Thomas Grease. Grace. We've got a Burakovsky game jersey for the Caps. Burakovsky. Base. When did they stop? Ian McCaution, Young Guns for the Panthers. That is true. That is true. Hayden, Young Guns for the Hawks. Portrait of Slavin for the Canes. Shining Stars of Shifley for the Jets. Shining Stars of Marshawn for Boston. Canvas for the LA Kings of Jeff Carter. Portrait of Vlasic for the Sharks. Yamamoto, Young Guns for the Oilers. Kerfoot, Young Guns for the Avalanche. Canvas of Stastny for the Blues. Portrait, Bobrovsky for the Jackets. And a Victor Mete for the Habs. Well, it's a solid first period for the Habs, though. So good on them. Going to Winnipeg and do what they're doing is pretty incredible. We've got a Joseph Wool Young Guns for the Maple Leafs. Portraits for the Tampa Bay Lightning of Vasilevsky. Baudin Young Guns for the Hawks. Base. Base. Dazzlers for Vegas. Patch ready. Canvas of Zuccarello for the Wild. Canvas of Kyle Connor for the Jets. Base. Portraits for the Avalanche of Makar. Lilligren, Young Guns for the Maple Leafs. Ingram, Young Guns for the Preds. Canvas for the Ottawa Senators of Kachuk. Game Jersey, Wurinski 
for the Blue Jackets, Zach Wierenski. Portraits of Dubois for the Jackets. Benson Young Guns for the Oilers. Huberto for the Panthers Canvas. We've got a Young Guns of Jake Evans for the Habs. And a Portrait Rookies of Norris for the Ottawa Senators. Norris. Synergy. We've got a green of Bork for the Boston Bruins, rowny blue for the Penguins, exceptional talent, Marshawn for the Boston Bruins, Nylander red rookie for the Sabres, Yamamoto blue for the Oilers, Tyson Jost for the Avalanche newcomers, red of Zetterberg for the Red Wings, green of Rosen for the Maple Leafs, Stamkos, Impact, for the Tampa Bay Lightning. We got a red of Ekblad for the Panthers. Bjork, blue for the Boston Bruins. Actually, that might be purple. I'm going to check that one quickly. And a tuck for the Golden Knights. Is that one purple, folks? Sometimes I can tell by the lettering a bit, like it's a little more shinier on the gold, but I think that could be for the Boston Bruins. Purples are quite rare. I think it is. We've got a red of Kucherov, Tampa Bay, Panarin blue for the Blue Jackets, and a flurry impact for the Vegas Golden Knights. Kerfoot, red rookie for the Avalanche, Pasternak blue for the Boston Bruins, exceptional talent, Subban for the Nashville Predators. It is purple, thank you. Red of Ovechkin for the Caps, Tim Heed for the San Jose Sharks, blue, and a Lemieux for the Penguins. We've got a Tej Thompson red for the Blues, Sackick for the Avalanche blue, and a McDonald. Tis purple, eh? Good old eyesight, just not the greatest at uh, catching everything. All right, let's see if I can get another one on one out of this. We've got number to 20 purple for the Sharks. Evander Kane. Avalanche Rookie Redemption. Threads of Time, Phil Kessel. Threads of Time for the Penguins. Phil the Thrill Kessel. We've got a dual jersey to 145 of Kucherov. Tampa Bay Lightning. We've got a dual rookie jersey auto to 99 of Norris for the Ottawa Senators. Josh Norris. Sick. $2.99 for the Buffalo Sabres, Victor Olofsson. $2.99 for the Montreal Canadiens, Carey Price. And a $3.99 
Red Rookie Lafreniere for the Rangers. Lafreniere. B E A. Beautiful. Chronology. We've got for the Tampa Bay Lightning, Victor Hedman. 222. For the Blue Jackets, Cam Atkinson. Autograph. For the Islanders, Fitzpatrick. And a Letterman Auto for the Old Jets, which is the Coyotes, number to 15, Thomas Steen. So Letterman for the Old Jets, which is the Coyotes, Thomas Steen. Steen! So how many points will McKinnon get tonight? What do you guys think? I'm going to say three. For the Capitals, Tom Wilson. Tom Wilson for the Caps. Very nice. Ultimate. For the Montreal Canadiens, Jonathan Drouin, 149. For the Vegas Golden Knights, Retro Rookie Auto of Hag, 225. For the Chicago Blackhawks, to 99, Rookie Auto Patch, Dominic Kuba. Beautiful. And we've got for the Ottawa Senators, Balsers, rookie jersey, $3.99. Kuba Leak, holy moly, that was a nice one. Yeah. I was going to say, congrats, Chicago. We've got for the Blues, Bennington to 349. For the Buffalo Sabres, Diamond Futures Autograph, Dylan Cousins. That's pretty damn rare. Cousins to 99, Diamond Futures. For the Blue Jackets, Team Logo Jumbos, rookies of Liam Foodie. Liam Foodie. We've got for the Buffalo Sabres, $3.99, Dylan Cousins. $3.99, Dylan Cousins. For the Montreal Canadiens, rookie gems of Romanov, $3.99. And an exquisite, exqu uh, exquisite performers, Sidney Crosby. All right, time to do the random for the box. Winner in this break. Just one of you members will win a box. Best of luck. Whoever lands on top gets the box. One, two, three. Fishbone for Florida gets it. Two cousins in one pack. <laughs> All right, give me 
one second. I just gotta put that in the section. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, as we stand, the carry price, which I thought was a very, very, very attractive chancer, again, massive hit out of 65 of carry price. That is uh, a good $19 chancer. We've got three left in the artifacts case, nine left in SP game used. 10 left in the tin uh, double up. 12 left in the CDD. And a few others. So whatever you guys want to get going, let me know. Still so suffer they don't yeah. I, I will say I know some Leaf fans are panicky, but I feel like a lot of Leaf fans took it pretty well. Maybe it's because they all knew this was gonna happen. I feel like when you're just you just know you're walking into this wall at some point. I I was definitely I was not happy, but I was definitely a lot calmer on this loss than I was on either one. So I think it's because I uh I knew what was inevitable. The only thing I will legitimately complain about, which I think I have every right to, is that was a garbage penalty call on the Leafs to call that, especially after what the Habs guy did to the Leafs. In my opinion, call one, or sorry, call both or call none. I don't know how you let the first one go and then call the second one. And again, I do believe both are penalties, to be clear. But absolutely, the Habs one was significantly worse than the Leafs one. So... That's the only thing uh, that really honestly bothered me. Because I thought that was a bit of uh, a stupid call to make in a game seven. With, with letting the other one go. I was fine, honestly, when they, uh, when they, let, they didn't call the other one uh, on the Leafs. Because I was like, you know what? They're letting them play. Let them play. That's cool with me. But to literally call that junk penalty... Sorry, to call that weaker penalty. It was a penalty, to be clear. It absolutely was.
All right, so if you guys want the artifacts to go, only three to go in that bad boy. Nine left in SPG Muse. I'd love to get that done. Trilogy's at nine. Chancer's at 28. Happy to get them all done. So let's get it going down to three folks. We are right there. Apparently up to four now. We're closer to there ish. But four left in a case of artifacts. Four to go. We are so close. Again, couple more spots, folks. We're good to go. This is up to you fine folks. We are very, very close on getting this done. So hopefully we can get uh, at least a few more breaks rocking out. And then uh, the next product, I believe, will be extended, just so you guys know, which will be on the 23rd of June. That is, as a current, that is what we're hearing. Just so you guys know. Now, how does playing the waiting game yet? Oh, that was another uh, interesting thing, Chris. Did you guys hear about the Beckett? They're halting all gradings right now. I'm not going to lie, that actually very much surprised me that they would do this now and not a little earlier. But yeah, they halted all their services except, I believe, like an express service or something that you got to pay 250 bucks for. So I don't know if you guys uh, heard about that today. Why? Uh, why what? Why do they halt it? So from what I read, I was going to do a bit more reading on it, to be honest. I didn't get uh, enough time to actually like, dive into it. From what I heard is that they're getting too far behind now. They're... I can't remember what they call their standard service now is eight months. 
and their economy service is now 12 months. I believe their express um, I'll try to remember what they said. Their express was 250 US or something. But I'm like, that's insane. Like legitimately that blows my mind that people are, are okay waiting almost a year for their economy mode or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, they basically, I think I can find the article for you guys. Beckett. There it goes. So Beck is suspend most grading services out of June seventh. It basically says Beck is premium level service costs two fifty a card and or one fifty without subgrades. Uh yeah. And it says Beckett's backlog means customers are currently waiting eight months or more for standard level and 11 months or more for economy. That is garbage. Like, I, I know not every company is perfect and there's things with every company. I, I absolutely know that. But how can anyone honestly say that the prices for Beckett and the turnaround times are acceptable. And even same with PSA. It just blows my mind how much money, like $250 US to get a card graded now for the express service. And again, I'm going to throw this out there because we obviously support it. MNT is so all I'm ever going to say to any of you folks who go and see people bash any gar card grading companies have facts of those kind of things. If a Beckett card sells for a hundred dollars more than an MNT card for the sake of conversation, realize it literally might have cost $250 more to get it graded. So you are not bringing in more money. Why anyone would use a Beckett grading service right now for any cards under 200 bucks just blows my mind. I absolutely understand it on High and McDavid's. I absolutely understand it on Matthews and Crosby's and rare cup rookies, stuff like that. I do not understand it. Why people are spending that much money on that long of a wait, especially a year. You know how long that is, people? That's a hell of a long time to wait. Like that shocks me. Absolutely shocks me. But hey, you know what? The other positive news, the other positive news, that's good news for the hobby if we're, we're seeing this kind of uh, trend going that people really want to value the cards. Oh, Lee, I'm not saying it's not worth it. Again, that's why I said you hit like a McDavid Future Watch, spending 250 bucks in the grand scheme of things is not that bad. I'm just saying, right now, for example, like a Matthews Younger 9, um, like a P PSA 9, a Beckett 9, and an MNT 9, I bet you are all within 50 to $75. Why would you spend $250 to get that graded when you could spend $39 at MNT? You would need at least 
a $250 difference on those cards to offset that. That's all I'm trying to say. And by the way, still only four left in artifacts. Why are we sitting at four left? It is a sealed case. I, I truthfully still think, Lee, that people do not appreciate how very, uh, how well valued M&T grading is. And that their turnaround times, I think they said on average are between two to five weeks delayed. How actually decent that is. When you have companies that are a year behind and they're, they're, they're roughly two to five weeks. Like I honestly feel like that's a really, really good rate that they're doing. But that's a to each their own, right? Each their own. So again, ladies and gentlemen, artifacts is probably the closest one to get filled. More than happy to get it done. So, for any Leaf fans out there, what team are you cheering for now, if any? What team are you cheering for right now, if any, of course? I know some of you guys, rightfully so, are going to be very bitter and might not want to even watch hockey anymore because you're so sick and tired of it. But what team are you cheering for? Because I know my my number two and my number three team right now are playing against each other. So one of my teams are uh, are going to advance. So that's that's a good news. That is definitely the good news for me. But it's also sad to see one of my teams get knocked out. Montreal is my number two. No. You know, actually, to be fair, to be fair, I don't really know if who my number two team is. My number team, two team always used to be Colorado. But I will tell you, I, obviously, as I love Vegas, I don't know if they've overtaken Colorado for me, so I'm kind of like indifferent on that portion of it. I don't really care who's my number two and three, but Colorado was always my number two team um, ever since Ray Bork won the cup. So. But Vegas obviously is my number two or three team because I love Vegas and it is Vegas. You know what, Lee? It's funny. Normally, I would root for a Canadian team. I still have a deep little, like, hope that they do well. But I will say Montreal and Winnipeg, for whatever reasons, are, like, my two most hated uh, teams for Canada. So I still want to see one do okay. I will admit that. But I do not want either of those teams to have a lot of success, to be honest. Why do you say that, Chris? 
And B Golden and obviously everyone else. I know obviously you say they're a fun team to watch. I will be 100% clear. I liked Vegas before they even were, like, once they were announced a team, I was cheering for Vegas because I love Vegas. So even if they were the world's worst team and never won a hockey game, I've always loved Vegas. But Colorado, the second Ray Bork won the cup, and I, I watched that cup run. That won me over on that team. And I've always had a soft spot for Colorado, so they've always been my number two team. But as I said, Colorado and Vegas to me are interchangeable. I don't even know if I have a number four. I honestly don't think there's another team I actually like in the league. Like, I like certain players, so maybe I'll go that route. So that could be, uh, that could be where I would go, but. Eastern team versus Western team in the finals. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really know. I, I think they reseeded them there, right? Is that the reason why though, Chris? I think you just did a reseeding. So I think that's just why it worked out that way. And the reason I'm saying that, Chris, is that if Toronto made it to this, uh, the final four, I don't think they would have played Avalanche or Vegas. As far as I was told. A Sens fan. That's a tough one as well. And they said, you guys just suck, and at least you know what you have all the way through. Leaf fans pretend, or Leaf team pretends that we're good. Give us hope, and then we just crash and burn. I don't know which, which of the two I'd rather have, to be honest. Or which of those two I'd rather be. It's kind of like group breaks. Is it better to have the best team in a group break and potentially fail? Or like, and obviously not know the group break, but the best team and get underwhelmed or the worst team and you have no expectations? Like, I just don't know which one's better. So it looks like Artifacts, folks, is going to go. I, I always remember, Lee, uh, my dad taking me to the, the Leafs Sens uh, playoff series, man. Those are always great memories as a kid for me. And how sad is it that I have to say great memories as a kid? That is that the last that I remember of a freaking Leafs playoff win. That in itself is just horrible. All right, good luck, everyone, in the random. 14,501. One, two, three. Copy, paste. One, two, three. Copy, paste. Sparky, St. Louis, Trader, Philly. Mike's got Islanders. Shane's got Vancouver. Reese, Vegas. Trader, Calgary, Boston. Cody had money. Traders, New Jersey, Rangers. Bo Sox, Dallas, Org's got Florida, Mark's got Winnipeg, Cody, Washington, Cards, Detroit, Will's got Tampa, Bo Sox, Ottawa, Gerald's got Buffalo, Jeeps has Carolina, Spencer, Arizona, Trader, Anaheim, D3's got San Jose, Bo Sox, LA, 
Scott, Chicago. Cody, Colorado. D16, Toronto. Canadian, Pittsburgh. D's got Nashville. Trader, Montreal, and Minnesota. And one Red Wing, Columbus. Yeah, sadly, I think whoever wins this series, again, you never know, but I feel like they're going to get absolutely trampled by the Avalanche or the Golden Knights. in my opinion, but... Alright, let me know if you guys are ready to start 501. Hurricanes are a very solid team. I don't disagree with that. Here we go, starting off CNC break 14,501. We've got the Artifacts 10 box case. And again, folks, let's get the other breaks moving. I'll give you guys about 9.30. Trilogies at 9, Spagoos at 9. Uh, I don't know what else we have, but a couple other breaks at 10. I feel like we can get them going. We've got a dual jersey to 145, Jack Eichel. Buffalo Sabres. Ooh, nice. For the Flyers to 49 Auto Facts Retro of Carter Hart. 49 autograph for the Flyers. Carter Hart. We've got a two ninety nine for the Wild of Stall. Two ninety nine for the LA Kings of Kopitar. We got a patchy patchy. A jersey patch for the Avalanche. Guy Laffler. Also, what do you guys think today? Is Vegas going to get walked over again, or are they at least going to put up a competitive battle or win? What do you guys think for tonight? Orum of Huberto for the Panthers. And a 299 for the Carolina Hurricanes, Sveshnikov. We got a 499 for the Boston Bruins of Pasternak. What's your guys' call for that game? Oh, that patch is very thick. Holy jeez. Look how much... That patch, I don't even know if it's going to fit in a normal card. Look how much thicker... Or, sorry. How tall that patch is comparatively. That is significantly taller than some of those cards. My gosh. That was horribly cut. Yeah, I agree. Vegas, I think, is going to come out guns blazing. Like, absolutely have to come out guns blazing. We've got for the Winnipeg Jets, dual patch out of 15 of Shifley Halebuck. I don't know if they're going to beat the Avalanche, but I do think they're going to come out. At least I hope they come out significantly more aggressive. That last game was pretty embarrassing, honestly, for them. We've got an Orum of Shea Weber for the Habs. $4.99 for the Ducks of Gibson. $2.99 for the Oilers of Koskinen. 
Another patch. Jersey patch of Domi for the Habs. To 65. Max Domi. Orum of Ryan Suter for the Wild. Two ninety nine for the Sharks. Evander Kane. And a two ninety nine rookie of Lindstrom for the Red Wings. Number three. Guy Lafleur for the Montreal Canadian, or sorry, for the Habs. Sorry, for the Avalanche, three ninety nine. Number to twenty. Purple of McDavid for the Oilers. Numbered one of 20. McDavid. Retro rookie redemption of Romanov for the Habs. Number four. Romanov for the Habs. We've got a remnant jersey of Bergeron for Boston. Two ninety nine for the Ottawa Senators, Josh Norris. Ninety nine for the Blues of Bennington. Rookie Redemption, Washington Capitals. And a remnant of Alex Petrangelo for the Blues. It's the plug. That's funny. Yeah, I, I, I don't know why they're not giving Romanov a, a good shot, but I feel like they uh, they don't really like playing their youngsters too, too often, do they? We've got an Orum of Gibson for the Ducks. Shabbat for the Ottawa Senators, 3 9 uh, Leah, what's your question on that? Just so I know I can help you out. We've got number to 30 for the Sharks, Eric Carlson. Rookie Redemption, Pittsburgh Penguins. Remnant Jersey of Brock Nelson for the Islanders. Three ninety nine for the Blue Jackets, Liam Foodie. Forty five base parallel of Gensel for the Penguins. Rookie Redemption, Buffalo Sabres. And one seventy five Max Domi for the You were bummed I weren't on. <laughs> well, what do you mean? Ashley was on yesterday. I don't know if you're specifically talking about me, but... Interesting, Golden. That, that could be an interesting reason why, obviously. We've got a gold jewel jersey relic redemption number five. Which is Roman numeral autograph and memorabilia. Calia for LA. Any suggestions? Blue Jays would probably be the next best. As in like the team that's going to be the closest to the championship. 
We've got an Orum of McDavid for the Oilers. Two ninety nine for the Canes of Aho. Two ninety nine of Kessel for the Coyotes. I did not. What did he? Uh, what did he say? Jersey patch emerald to ninety nine. Martin Cott for the Avs. Martin Cott. Seattle Kraken. Or um, for the LA Kings of Kopitar. $3.99 for the Red Wings of Larkin. $2.99 Atkinson for the Jackets. Yeah, I don't know who's going to be... Uh, I think I heard Dermot's probably the most likely, right? agree they should get rid of any of those guys. Two ninety nine for the Maple Leafs of Pop in. Marner would be the most likely. I do not agree that they should though. Why would you get rid of your core right now? 45 Duclair for the Ottawa Senators. That would be hilarious Chris eh? Wild card number 218 of Kraftsov for the Rangers. Number to 175 dual jersey of Hellebuck for the Jets. I think people just have to have a little more patience. 175 Hellebuck. Number to 65 jersey patch of Freddie Anderson. Rich, are you on the get rid of it or not get rid of it core? Or part of the core. Or um, for the Ottawa Senators, Brady Kachuk. $2.99 for the Islanders, Anders Lee. $4.99 of Barzil for the Islanders. I absolutely know what Marner did. Trust me, I watched the games. My only thinking for those, I just want you to take a step back for a second and think about this. Up until this year, would any of you change the core of the Avalanche? Landeskog, McKinnon, Rontanen. Would any of you guys, before this year, change the Avalanche team? Those three guys. Because they have not done anything as of yet. I want to, I'm, I'm just kind of curious. Quinn Hughes, year one rookie sweaters for the Vancouver Canucks. Top 12 rookie signatures, Victor Olafsson. And for that matter, would any of you guys said the Avalanche were a success up until this year? Like an actual success. Would anyone honestly say that? We've got a 999 for the Maple Leafs, Robertson. 299 for the Montreal Canadiens, Sitar. Okay, so that's successful to win playoff rounds now and get knocked out. 145, Panarin. So when did the Avalanche start making the playoffs and actually make like go further than the first round? Two years ago or three years ago? Auto facts of Asplen. To be fair, that's what I, I'll, I'll show you why I'm saying this. 
And I'll explain my reasoning of not panicking yet. And I do mean yet. Two ninety nine for the Avalanche, Guy Lafleur. When was the first time the Avalanche got out of the first first round? Just so I know. Four ninety nine for the Ottawa Senators, Shabbat. Just be honest. Well, I said you're not you're not answering the question. That that I want to explain something very quickly. And I'm trying to be... Well, we are trying to compare the Avs and the Leafs because here's the reason why. If I remember correctly, the Avalanche has not got to the second round. Chalios, 399 for the Red Wings, till 1819. Right? So they got to the second round in 1819. Number to 75 for the Avalanche, McKinnon. Which means Landeskog was seven years into his NHL career. McKinnon was five years into his career. Number to 214, wild card redemption, which is Yo Levy. So basically, you had those two guys out there longer without winning a series, but nobody says get rid of them. 599, Letnov for the Sharks. Now, to be clear for those thinking that I'm a homer, only the one person. I do believe if the Leafs do not get past first round next year, you have to make a major change. Geeky for the Carolina Hurricanes, $9.99. That I believe. $9.99, Emerald of Barkov. I just don't understand why everyone panics when other teams have done similar things. Emerald Rookie Redemption, Boston Bruins. And a Huberto remnants for the Panthers. As I said, Landeskog, it took him seven years to get to seven, uh, se second round. And McKinnon, five years to get to second round. The Maple Leafs, I believe this was their fifth year together. So again, why are we panicking with these guys? They definitely have more money tied up. I agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. And I do think Marner would be the only logical one to trade right now. Aho for the Canes. Because Nylander's contract's good. And at least he proved that he was okay in the playoffs. You can't really get rid of Matthews. That makes no sense. 99 Emerald. Bowen Byram. And Tavares, I believe, has a no movement. So that's absolutely irrelevant. Retro Rookie Redemption number one, Lafreniere. Like, here's the thing for anyone saying blow it up. So, Greg, for example, Rich, I'm not saying you're saying blow it up. What do you possibly do that's going to make our team better, in all honesty? So, you guys get rid of Marner or whoever you guys are going to say. Who, who are we grabbing that's going to somehow make us much better? Hole B for the Capitals, Remnants. I'm just kind of curious what you guys' logic is on that. Two ninety nine, Timo Meyer for the Sharks. Ninety nine for the Anaheim Ducks of Getzlaff. And a rookie redemption, Montreal Canadiens. Blow it up. It can't get worse. Well, it could. We could make we could not make the playoffs. 175 Headman. I agree with that, Rich. Go get toughness, but I don't think getting Marner. Let me put it this way. Getting rid of Marner, we're not gonna get toughness back. We're gonna get another good player in return. You get rid of the Hymans of the world, then we can use that money to get toughness. I like, Simmons was supposed to be tough, he just failed us. It's easy to replace top and talent. Golden, you're just different level. 
We've got a Lord Stanley Legacy Relics of Gomez for the Devils. We've got, that's a pretty good one, an autographed Emerald Rookie Redemption Jersey Patch number two, Kaprizov. You're disappointed in me. You're disappointed in me because I do not want to get rid of 23 to 24 year old superstars in the league. I feel like that's not a logical move. Not yet. We've got a 4.99 Eichel for the Buffalo Sabres. Again, how long did it take Washington to win with the team they had? Two four two ninety nine. Sorry, Yandel for the Panthers. Two ninety nine. Peyton Kreps for the Vegas Golden Knights. Forty five for the Buffalo Sabers. Jack Eichel. Okay, so all I'm saying is you keep saying the same things. Rookie Redemption Rangers. You think getting rid of Matthews and Marner is going to help our team, in all honesty. 175 JVR for the Flyers. Getting rid of one? Wow. And what are we getting back for them? That's, that's what I'm wondering, out of curiosity. What are we honestly getting back for these guys? Vx's old fights. That's awesome. I, I just don't understand. Like, I know everyone wants to throw everyone on the bus. Yes, Marner had a god awful postseason. Absolutely agree with that. Matthews underperformed. Absolutely agree with that. What are we going to possibly do to get better players that we are guaranteed to get better players and throw away franchise players out of Marner and Matthews? There's no honest way so what you're saying you feel like you're hearing a recording for me so I'm consistent of how I am I do not and I will repeat this I do not believe in blowing up any team's core at such a young age why would you possibly do that if any of these guys were 33, 32, I would agree with everybody, one needs to go. My point is, why was nobody up till when McKinnon and Landeskog lost six years in a row and never got past the first round after six years, did anyone sit there and say, trade Landeskog, trade McKinnon, they're useless, they're not working. They didn't even make the playoffs for five years in a row. I don't understand why everyone's okay with that per se, but this team, in my opinion, this team was very quick into getting the playoffs. Like the Avalanche, Landeskog, oh I agree Rich, Landeskog and McKinnon took five years, sorry, five years and seven years to actually win the playoffs. Five years and seven years. And that's only to win one round, just to be clear. That's not actually winning winning. Oh, Colorado, yeah, is a small market. All I'm saying though, Rich, 
is your, I think, knee-jerk reaction. Why would you get rid of 23-year-old potential superstars? Who are you replacing who's going to give us the longevity that these guys could and the caliber for the, as long as we have? I agree the contracts are a little high. But again, okay, so we trade Marner. Who are we trading him to? And what are we bringing back? Find the comps with the Avalanche. Well, the comps would be they didn't make the playoffs for five years. Again, I, I know... Greg, I know you like going back and forth, but I'm saying if Toronto didn't make the playoffs for five years in a row, is that a better outcome? Or is it better to make the playoffs and lose in the first round? Out of those two outcomes, what's the better outcome for the Leafs right now? Out of curiosity to, to Leaf fans. I personally would rather make the playoffs five years in a row than not make the playoffs five years in a row. When did Toronto have a 3-1 series lead? Twice. I feel like I'm missing something on that one. I, I don't recall. I might be wrong. I don't recall Toronto having a 3-1 series lead before. We had a 3-1 lead against Boston? I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember the three-one lead. Oh, Toronto is going to be screwed on the uh, on the uh, what do you call it? The cap. Rohano is definitely screwed. Yeah, I, I don't know if Riley's going to stay or not, to be honest. So also, Greg, I know you like to rag on me, but when you said I'm wrong, can you please confirm? Because I literally looked it up, so unless I'm really, really bad with the looking at things, Toronto never had a 3-1 series lead against Boston. So, again, maybe before trying to call me out that I don't know what I'm talking about, I kind of do remember those things. So, I would like you to admit that you were wrong on that once you do your research on that. Matt, I think they give him one more year. I do. I think they give him one more year. I think it's a fair thing. I, You know what? I, I don't think you got to pin this on Dubas. I think most people would sit there and say on paper 
This is a very strong team and it should have won. Yeah. Yeah, the team now is pretty different than it was three, four years ago. I'm still waiting for that Boston fact checking. Because apparently I was very wrong on that, so I want to make sure. I think it's probably easier not to try to call someone else unless you're 100% confident on the answer. I absolutely think if they don't win next year, looking it up. Well, I already looked it up. 2019, Toronto won game one, Boston won game two. Toronto won game three, Boston won game four. Toronto won game five, Boston won game six, Boston won game seven. That was 2019. 2018, Boston won game one, Boston won game two. Toronto won game three. Boston was up 3-1. Toronto won game five and game six and then blew it in game seven. So not as bad as we thought. Boston actually, they crawled up from Boston, which was impressive. Dubas would be the first guy I think fired next year. And honestly... The coach would probably be the second, maybe even the first person fired. I, I don't know. I'm I'm I would presume they would keep Keith this year. I don't know what they do. I don't know what you can do. Yeah, Freddie's gonna be gone. Kerfoot. I, I would be sad to see Kerfoot go. Yeah, I, I liked him. I think he had a great playoffs. Um, Hyman's going to be interesting. If he wants to stay for Toronto, he's going to take a bit of a discount. If not, he'll get paid as he should from other team. Simmons and Thornton, God knows. Maybe Thornton plays another year. I don't like that, but... I go for Nylander. That would be an interesting one. So, so are we admitting that you you were wrong on that, right? I just want to make sure because you kind of passed up on that and went to the different conversation. But yes, I hated Thornton on the power play. I do not know why we did Thornton on the power play. I would take pretty much almost anybody on the team on the power play other than Thornton. I was not a fan of that. I'm guessing maybe for draws and passing ability, but hell, he didn't really show much of a passing ability. And no adjustments? What do you mean no adjustments? Uh, no adjustments on the power play. I think it's on Malholtra and Keefe. I, I think that's absolutely piss poor of them to not change that up. Absolutely, I agree with that. I, I don't understand why it took them that, like, it was 20 games at the end of the season that it was not firing or something of like that. Like, 70 power plays in a row or 80 power plays in a row that they sucked. Why are you not changing it? The thing is, Greg, if you actually l honestly listen to a lot of my conversations, 
I was advocating that I don't understand why they're not putting Nylander and Matthews on the same power play to keep teams wondering which player is going to shoot. I was on that for, I think, game four on in the playoffs. I don't know why they had Marner, Matthews, Thornton on the first power play. Put Marner on the second power play. Put Nylander on the first one. Get Thornton out of there. Put anyone else but Thornton on. Put Kerfoot on there. Mikheyev, I don't care. Spezza. I know he's second power play. I like him there, but... Anyone but Thornton. Put Nylander on there so you have two shooting uh, potentials. The problem with our power play is you knew it was Matthews and Matthews only going to shoot. It was not really a threat to anybody. Hence why they failed for 30 games in a row. Alright, so ladies and gentlemen, I'll kind of make this uh, about a five minute last call. If any of you guys want to get the spots moving in the other breaks. I will get the breaks up for you guys now for tomorrow, so you guys get the first shot at it. That one's live. Finish research. What do you need to research? I literally looked it up. There's no researching on that. And I think someone else also said too. We lost in six, if I remember correctly, to Washington. We came back from 3-1 up to Boston. We were up 3-2 on Boston the next year. We lost in five to Columbus, which I believe we were down to one. I don't know if we were down to nothing. I think it was only down to one. And this year was an absolute devastatingly bad year. As it's not, uh, I remember all the playoff series quite well. And I remember them because I was at a lot of those home games. And I was very disappointed at 90% of them. I was at the one that Jake Gardner literally gave the puck to the Boston Bruins player. I think it was an overtime and we lost the game. That was great. That was a fun one. Not the greatest playoff history. But going back to what uh, somebody said about not, or when I said about not making the playoffs, we're making the playoffs. In my opinion, if the Maple Leafs did not make the playoffs since Matthews' era, I think this team would have been blown up a year or two ago. I think that would have been an absolute utter failure if the Maple Leafs did not make the playoffs in the last five years. That would have been way worse, in my opinion. Because that means you're not even progressing in the regular season. And be golden, the... the the game is uh, somewhat what I called, but the opposite side, isn't it? I said a 3-1 victory is what I felt, or a 3 nothing, and it's 3-1 right now. I just called the wrong side.
And, and Golden, from a Habs fan right now, because obviously I haven't really watched the game, are the Habs playing good, the Jets playing bad, or is it a bit of a combination of both, or what is it? Is Price stealing the show? What's happening uh, right now while they're, while they're winning? <laughs> Habs playing good? Okay. Are the Jets playing okay? Do they look bad or the Habs seem quick? I've looked I've looked at when I ever see the TV, they're uh they seem pretty quick. Which they got a lot of young guys that are quick. That Suzuki goal was filthy, by the way. Absolute filthiness. I, I don't know what you're trying to prove to me uh, with the regular season. I know that they're a very good regular season team. I don't think anyone doubts that they're very good in the regular season. And I don't know what you're trying to convince me that I don't think they're performing well in the playoffs. Nor have I ever said I think they're succeeding in the playoffs. I'm just saying I think people are way too quick to blow up teams. And if anyone remembers when Tampa Bay lost in the first round too... And everyone said to blow up that team. If I recall correctly, a lot of people said trade a lot of the big boys. They won the Stanley Cup the next year. At the end of the day, I think you have to... St they're still young. There's a lot of changes that still need to be made. But I don't see why blowing this... I think blowing this team up would be steps backwards. At least right now. I give him at least one or two more years. Uh, MNT is about two to five weeks delayed the last we saw or checked. Um, which is pretty much the best in the industry right now. <laughs> which is kind of funny. But yeah, they are about two to five weeks behind their normal service times. But as I said, they have been catching up. It makes you sad. Well, you know what? If in a year or two that doesn't happen, I absolutely agree they should move one or two of those pieces. I still think they are absolutely young and still learning. And again, not saying it is a, it's an excuse, but we were without Tavares this year. I do think that makes a bit of a difference. Not a lot of a difference, but I think that's a factor. Ah, there you go. I appreciate that. It's always good when people can admit when they're wrong. I just, honestly, I've seen it too many times 
How many times did uh, Washington do, lose to Pittsburgh before they broke through that barrier? Right? Tampa loses in the first round. I'm pretty sure Tampa got... Did they lose 4 nothing to Columbus? Is that what it was? They got uh, swept? And everyone said blow up the Tampa team? Well, it's a good thing they didn't blow it up because then uh, who knows where they would have been. Rich, the only thing before I get off, I will say about the Tavares thing. The only thing where I do think it makes a decent sized difference in the series is when you took Tavares out, at least on the perception, you only have one big line to really focus on, which I think it makes it easier for the Habs to really kind of put their best shutdown guys on. Tavares, in my opinion, at least adds the element that if you want to shut us down on, on uh, the first line, we can come out with a second line that's just as good or very close to it. Um, Matt, I'm 50-50 I'm on that one right now. I liked it in the first two years. I think it's balancing itself out now. I fear the next two, three years, we're going to start seeing it wasn't a very good contract in those years. Yeah, Golden, I've always said, and I've always been very consistent... I've always been very consistent that I didn't mind JT's contract. I don't think it will be a good contract at the end of it for the last part of the years. And that's, that's what I'm saying, Golden. I don't know what people want. Is it better to have no playoffs or playoffs? I would still like... To make the playoffs. It's not fun. I would still like to make the playoffs and get knocked down in the first round. Than be a team that is not making the playoffs. If you're a team not making the playoffs. I do not want to be in the bottom 16 of the NHL. Or 15 or whatever it is. Like to me round. Like. There's a lot of good teams. Like do we blow up Washington for example. Washington lost in the first round 4-1. Does Washington just have to explode their core right now? Because this is what now? Two years? How far did Washington make it last year? I actually completely forgot about that. Did they make it past the third round? Second round? So Washington lost in the first round in the last two years. Are we blowing up that core? I don't think so, not yet. They still got some good talent. Uh, Greg, again, in my opinion, probably one of the worst, like, wrong time to say that because if I'm correct, did Stamkos not literally get injured last year? I know he played like three minutes or something in a game or five minutes. But they lost their captain and they made it to the Stanley Cup Finals. But my point is he made it to the like they made it to the Stanley Cup finals without their captain. I don't think that's an excuse for the team. Again, I love the Leafs. I would love to have a million excuses of why they should have won and all the stuff, but you cannot use Tampa. Tampa played without their captain almost the entire playoffs and still won the cup. Not an excuse. JT was probably the third most important person on our team anyways. Realistically, may... Yeah, probably third.
He came back in the fourth round, if I remember correctly, right? So, again, they won rounds one, two, and three without their captain. And he literally had to say he played five minutes. What did that, did that series, what did that series even go? That's how bad I forget the uh, COVID cup. What was that series? Did they... Like that literally, I was almost blank on uh, what happened last year. Did they win it in like five, six, seven? That is horrible that I don't even remember that. Six, okay, there it was. Six against Dallas, wow. Jesus. Go for Kraken. Kraken's going to be a fun team. Kraken will be a fun team. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, the breaks are up for tomorrow. Obviously, enjoy the rest of the uh, hockey game for the Habs fans. Obviously, the Avalanche game will be a beauty, so enjoy that one. Have a beautiful night, everyone. And see you guys tomorrow at 7.15 p.m. Eastern Time. Have a good one, everyone.